Okay, uh, uh, we are going over the book of James, and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, words. Uh, actually, James chapter uh, three, verse two, uh, the uh, two other verses. Let's go. The read the passage. So let's all read it together. Uh, we all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. We'll take a simple example. Although they are too large, are driven by a strong wind. They are steered by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot wants to go. And by becoming a small part of the body by huge great force, consider what a great forest is set on fire and a spot. Uh, this is a, a chapter on the book of James talking about what we say, our words or the tongue. And uh, let's go to the next. Uh, this is like the previous message that we covered. The important key is this. Uh, James talked about living faith and that faith. Uh, faith with actions, with your actions, etc. And an important thing is that, uh, keep in mind, you are a saved child of God. Having faith concerning God's salvation for us, or what we call the covenant, that's living faith. So the faith is centered upon that, the work that Christ did. Now, God allows trials to come into our lives, not mess us up, but He wants to really complete our faith. So the purpose of trials, the problems in our lives, so that our faith can be completed. And, uh, in a sense, like uh, in a way that he's making us more, uh, more in a sense like Christ. Uh, now, faith in the covenant of the gospel is what we have. That's the key. Uh, from the previous messages, is that living faith is centered upon uh, the covenant or the gospel. Now, one of the things is that uh, they say faith uh, without works is that too. What does that mean? Uh, really, to help us complete our faith, we should take apply. A little bit of uh, the word that we receive. Right. Uh, now, I cover quite a bit of things and so on, and a couple of papers in there. One thing is this that uh, I know there's a saying that says people would rather see a sermon than hear one. So, I'm, I'm not saying that you should be here, but really, like, uh, faith is about like, uh, what I believe in, I wind up giving it. And a lot of it has to do with what I'm not saying. It. So, it's uh, our what we say, the word that we speak, the what we confess, that really is something that we really matters a lot. And uh, the picture of Abraham and Isaac and then the sacrifice ram, I told you that, that story before, and Abraham was counted for this work that obeying God about sacrificing Isaac, I consider that as righteousness because Abraham was actually believing the covenant of God gave, the promise of God, that through your son Isaac, the Messiah is going to come. So even though it was something that was difficult for Abraham. Abraham had no issue about obeying that because he believed that God would raise Isaac from the dead. And we covered that passage before. Uh, the airplane, I don't know if you remember from last time, that if you look at your life, you really have different levels of it. But at the top level, what does your life have to do with the covenant? What is the purpose of it? At the bottom level, the lowest level, what can I do today, day to day, to apply this? So here, yeah, this is a, a, a follow-up from before. Uh, let's go to the next. So your words, what you say, what matters. Uh, if you wonder what that picture is, it's a picture of a ship. Behind that, the arrow is a rudder. So the ships are gigantic. I, I wonder how big, uh, I know the Titanic was supposed to be a gigantic ship. I wonder how big the rudder was compared to it. That's what it's probably much bigger than a human being because it's still a huge ship. But compared to the entire ship, the rudder is probably a small tiny piece. But the rudder controls where the ship is. The words that we say, control what's going to happen to our life, what we confess. Uh, we have a picture of a horse in here. The horse has a thing called bits. This is the thing that the uh, rider, he pulls at it, and the bits are bite into it, and the way we steer the bits, or, or 
the rein of the horse, the horse follows the direction. In the same way, the horse is a big animal. That bit on his lips, that his mouth is very small. But that controls where the horse goes. In the same way, your tongue. The tongue, compared to the rest of your body, is small. But it will control the life. What the tongue, uh, what you compare, what you say, it's so difficult. Uh, there is this thing called like a self-fulfilling prophecy. I don't know if you know the concept of it. So basically, it is like a certain thing that you have a faith on, or you say and such, and you find that happening that way. And a lot of it is because you actually believe in that, you might take your actions and other things for that direction. But the thing is this. The important thing is what's inside of you actually is a reflection, a reflector to what you say. But uh, we don't say these things out of for no reason. I say angry words, good times there's some anger inside of you. I say depressing words because I'm depressed inside. And sometimes you might say things by mistake, but chances are in your subconscious there's something in there. Because uh, before we talk about maybe our action of the saying the correct words and such, what's more important is what's inside of you. Next. Now, uh, there's a difference between uh, wise people and foolish people. People, what the Bible considers wise, they actually have words of faith and words of peace. Through those words, peace making happens. Through those words, conflicts are resolved. People come alive. Uh, this is a picture of Joseph and his brothers. And Joseph had every reason to be angry at each other. But what did the brothers do? Basically, throw him as a slave. They hated him ever since. They were jealous of Joseph. And later on, Joseph, he had, when he had all the power and strength to punish the brothers, he didn't have to kill them. He could just, you know, put him in the dungeon for a few years or something like that. He did not do that. What did he say? He said, brother, do not be afraid. God sent me ahead of time. That's what he said the words of faith, words of the forgiveness and reconciling. And basically, he just he saved the rest of his brothers. But of course, in the real world, though, that uh, much of the words that our people say, because they have bitterness, they have envy, or they have selfish ambition. And then the thing is that, yeah, you just sometimes you can't prevent and stop some of the words you say. And that is, once the word is off, it's impossible to get it back in. So in the, the Bible talks about the two differences. Now, how can we actually have the same idea of Joseph? Did? And for one thing is that Joseph was not just playing with words. It's actually what he believed in himself. He did not just say because you know, he had to be a good guy and says, brothers, I forgive you. He truly believed that God sent him higher man. He actually had the evidence in his life to show that, you know what? God, God did all these things. God is the one that caused uh, uh, you brothers to sell me as a slave. And then God did that to save lives. The next. Okay, now, words of faith. The results of words of faith these days. Uh, you really actually get the results of the fruits of peace and righteousness. Uh, you see, like, uh, lion and a lap. I couldn't find anything to work with peace and so on, so this is the best we can talk. Lion and the lap. Actually, there's a scripture passage that says that one day uh, when God's kingdom uh, take place, yeah, the lion will be playing with the lamb. But, but it's a painting because it's not, can't happen on earth. It was all here. A life that takes place. You know, like uh, a lot of times it's because of the scars that we have, because of the, the wrong things inside of us that our lives, a lot of the things are twisted or just uh, not taking place. Maybe you have an uh, issue with the, uh, the words that you say. Maybe you, you are like a self fulfilling prophecy in the sense that uh, maybe you have negative view about who you are. Say, oh, you know, it has not worked in my life until now, it's not going to work out. And guess what? It's not going to work out. Is that you, you, you are not fulfilling your own uh, prophecy, what you say. Or maybe you have, uh, you say, oh, it's that person's fault, that person's fault, and so on. And think, yeah, yeah, you, why is that happening? Seems that way. Things get blocked, relationships get blocked, problems happen, conflicts happen. Because people with, uh, actually evangelize to people but they'll never get connected and they never grow as disciples you're always uh, dealing with uh, your anger and other things in your life and scars and it winds up uh, getting worse and worse uh, Jesus said this like uh, blessed are the peacemakers for they'll be called children of God you know one of the easiest way for non-believers to tell if you're a child of God or not is by what you say strangely the words of faith comes out 
strangely, you actually have words that heal people and give peace. I'm not saying that everybody that just does that is children of God, but the thing is that it's to the point the non-believers, they why wait a minute, this guy is different. Wait a minute, this person seems to be peaceful. Uh, I mentioned earlier at the beginning that, you know, people rather hear uh, see a sermon than hear one. And oftentimes, this is something that, like, uh, for the longest time, I didn't realize that I had this problem, but I remember, like, uh, reflecting back all these years, people say, Stephen, what's the matter with you? Stephen, are you angry? <laughs> and the thing is that I'm not angry at that time. I thought at that time I was okay. I thought my expression was not, like, uh, either angry or anything, just nothing. But as far as people can see, they think that I'm stressed out or I'm angry or something. Oh, so what kind of sermon am I giving to people? What's the message I'm relating to people? Uh, in some senses, of course, like uh, sometimes some of the words that I say I regret it. But I don't, uh, to most people, I don't talk too much. But I, w I notice every once in a while when I talk, the talk is a little bit putting the other person down and such. Oh, my goodness. What's inside of me? What's inside of me that is sort of like twisted and such that. Uh, it goes that way. And of course, naturally, because of that, my relationship with people is not that great. Especially when I have those habits come out and I talk to my family members, my wife and such, of course, that's not going to be very helpful for the relationship. Then what can we apply and then receive from the message on James then? Next. Uh, important thing about James is small actions, small actions of faith, things that can help us to really uh, God is guiding us, trying to perfect our faith, perfect, we restore everything in our lives. Uh, we are children of God. We are not machines. God is not trying to have us, you know, here, you, you are a worker of God, and you evangelize the world. That's not what God wants. It's more like God has this great, huge purpose, an enterprise of doing world evangelization. And he would love more than anything else for his children to be part of the family business. That's what God wants. First to really realize, wow, this is the greatest thing in the world. And he's willing to wait until we open our eyes to that. So then uh, this thing has to do with uh, covenant. What does this covenant have to do with me, again? What does this gospel that Jesus is a Christ have to do with me? Why should I be different from everybody else? I'm not saying that we are better than others, but we have a different purpose in our lives. Children of God, whether you believe in this covenant or not, God has called them for a purpose. And then uh, we try to like to say that uh, the purpose it has to do with this covenant connects with Jesus being the Christ, the Great Commission, and all these things. But what does that have to do with me? Because if you actually open your eyes and ears a little bit, and there's a reason for me, then it actually gives you a purpose. So maybe the plane is going down a little bit more at 1,000 feet, then what kind of person should I be? I realize now that, oh, God wants to really restore everything in my life. And I really want to have a faith like Joseph had. Have the faith like of certain other people. Uh, I'm reading currently this book by James Dobson. Uh, he's a great uh, author about uh, family things and such. And in the past, uh, um, I read it once in a while. And by this time, that because I have a boy, the the book is about how to raise boys. And there's like a, something that James Dobson talks about his own family, his grandfather, his father, and then the line of faith that comes from that man in the family. And now looking at the I want that. I really want to that what the, you consider like maybe, uh, uh, you know, like the Christian, uh, conservative, like uh, we're long time Christian families in the good and correct sense that America represents. Here's uh, showing an example of that in the book and say, I really want that. Maybe that's like a, the kind of person I want to become. And those kind of desires come in. Of course, yeah, you want to become a person of faith or you want to become a person that plans disbelief. You want to have a person of peace or somebody that bitterness is filling their lives. Of course, all of us, we really want to have the kind of faith and then the, really the complete life so that we can save our families, uh, save our field and such. Then going down a little bit more, then what matters then is what's inside of us. What kind of words are inside of us? What do I meditate upon? I'm not just simply thinking about like uh, God's word here. I'm talking about what's inside of us that really makes us. Because out of what's inside of us, the words come out. If you actually have uh, really the, a lot of uh, words concerning 
the gospel concerning God, who he is, your relationship with God, how much God loves you, and how much, even though you make mistakes and blow up and other things too, but God still loves you and that God has a purpose for you, and you're full of that faith, guess what? You're not going to look down upon yourself. Uh, honestly, like I had a really pretty bad self-esteem issues before in the past. It's all about, okay, because uh, how can... How can others like somebody like me even when I don't like myself? So I always try to avoid people and everything else too. And say, okay, uh, what good can come out of uh, from my life? But one thing I discovered about this covenant and such and said, oh, God has a plan. And then as time passes, wow, God has an important plan concerning my life. And then uh, to the point now, Pastor jokingly says, you know what? He finds that there's only me that can do this. Not saying that you're great, but you find the calling that God has done for you. And each of us, there's a something that only you can do, and that's why God called you. You discover that, and you start like really experiencing answers concerning that. Uh, it changes you. The more you meditate upon it, it changes you. And then the key to it is Christ. Christ, who God sent. Christ, who's the expression of his love to us. Uh, we sang several songs at the beginning, and I uh, uh, love those songs. Those are confessions. Those are the things that come from our, our mouths, from our hearts. In the same way, too, what are the confessions that you tell to yourself? So last one here. What words am I telling to myself and others? Uh, oftentimes, your words, things that you said mentally to yourself, those words actually have impact. If you have words of faith, even concerning yourself, so you say, it's okay, Stephen. It's okay if you mess up this time. God is with you. Let's pray to God. Let's ask God that God will do damage control. And that God will guide you, and that it has a purpose right now. Situations right now are bleak and such. Is okay. But it's okay. God has a plan. God is going to take care of it. Just as the message today about Paul, Paul was inside prison. He enjoyed the kingdom of heaven. The prisoner was not a problem to him. So you can tell, confess that to yourself. Give the message. The biggest confession that we have is about Christ. Uh, Jesus is a Christ. He really is the solution to all my problems. And what are, the, what are the things, the words that we confess to others? So may we really have the words of peace, words of faith, uh, just like the examples before. The last uh, one. Uh, this is some of the confessions that uh, David, these are the words from David. And let's read together some of the confessions that he gave. And this is a, a thing that the prayer that David had and may become our prayer too. First, uh, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. My strength and my redeemer. And then David's like, biggest confession. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. Okay, so I pray that uh, as in the Bible, as David's example, as like Joseph's and the other's examples, may you really have uh, in your heart that earnest desire to say, God, I really want to receive answers and maybe receive answers in the way that these people in the Bible have received. I know that right now, my uh, current state right now might not be anything near there, but God, I have that desire and I ask you, God, the same God who answered them, may you answer me. Have that confession of faith. And as that God gives you assurances, confirm that. You know what? Stephen is okay. God is making you, perfecting you. God, through the trials, through the problem situation, he's perfecting you. And then right now, I just need to be able to just focus on God and experience God through Christ changing me. Uh, may all of us uh, be able to enjoy these blessings. And let's pray. Uh, Father God, we thank you so much for this time that we can really experience, uh, oh God, what living faith is concerning the covenant and the gospel. But really, so that to the point that we enjoy so much inside of us, so that the words that we say, what we meditate upon, it is uh, this covenant, this gospel, this living faith. Uh, may that living faith be applied to our fields and our lives so they can save people, they can change people, starting first with us. Help us to really be able to confess that because we are children of God, because God is we are with us, that problems are really not problems when God is with us. Help us to not just uh, say it with words, but really experience this in our lives. Uh, may we glorify through all of us here. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray.
as we take offering, let's sing Stand in Awe. Better than all this world, better than all I know, better than life itself, your love is. All that I have is yours, all that I'm living for, all that I need is in you, Lord. For you alone, better than life. Than anything in this world, you alone are all that I want, and everything you are good. And I stand in awe of all that you are. I stand in awe of you, and everything unto you, everything held by you. All of our hope is in you, Jesus. Nothing compares to you. Nothing will take your place. All of our trust is in you, Lord. You alone are better than life, than anything in this world. You alone are all that I want, and everything you are good. And I stand in awe of all that you are, and I stand in awe of you. And I stand in awe of all that you are, and I stand in awe of you. of my heart, all that I have, worship Jesus. All of my heart, all that I have, worship Jesus. All of my heart, all that I have. Jesus, all of my heart, all that I am, worship Jesus. Cause you alone are better than life, than anything in this world. You alone are all that I want, and everything you are good. And I stand in awe of all that you are. I stand in awe of you. You alone are better than life, than anything in this world. You alone are all that I want, and everything you are good. I stand in awe of all that you are. I stand in awe of you, and all of my heart, all that I am, worship Jesus. All of my heart, all that I am, worship Jesus. Thank you. 
Thank you. 